couple of years ago, I met a little girl that we are calling Paris. I didn't know her until she was about two years old. But I could hardly imagine what the world looked like to her growing up here in Cincinnati. My name is Cindy. I am a Pro Kids CASA volunteer. When I got my first case, I began to learn about Paris. And I learned about her mother, who we will call Leah. I started there because we know that the vicious cycle of child abuse and neglect usually crosses generations. And that was true in this family. 22 years earlier, Leah was dropped off at her grandmother's. Her own mother didn't want to take care of her with her stepbrother and stepsister. Leah struggled with everything. She was always behind in school. The teachers told her grandmother that she probably wouldn't get past the intellectual age of a teenager. Her grandmother didn't know what to do with her. And Leah didn't know what to do either. Leah had been sexually abused by her stepbrother during a visit. Her grandmother didn't know. Nobody knew. They just knew she was angry, struggling in school. She was spiraling out of control. Her grandmother gave up on her and sent her home to her mother. Her mother thought that the way to control her was with physical force. She abused Leah repeatedly. Leah couldn't wait to leave home. She took off to New Jersey with a guy. She was only 17. She became pregnant and then had a miscarriage. She had no support, little understanding of what was happening to her. Leah went to the roof of a building, ready to throw herself off. But she didn't. Instead, Leah took off again and came back to Cincinnati. She didn't know what she was going to do. She wasn't going back to her mother's or her grandmother's. She didn't have a job. She didn't have a home. She was all alone. Then she met a guy. We will call him Daniel. When their daughter Paris was born, Leah was living on her own most of the time, always scrambling to find a place to live. There wasn't always enough food or clean diapers. Then when Paris was a year and a half, her brother Julian was born. A nurse came to visit a little while after Julian had come home from the hospital. She saw that Leah was not bonding with her baby. She immediately reported that the family needed help. There was no food and no diapers, not even a dresser drawer to use for a crib. Social workers followed up. The children were hungry and there was a stench in the house. They were worried about Paris because she seemed to already be acting like a parent. And she was only a toddler. They offered vouchers, forms to fill out for benefit programs, appointments for the children to go to the doctor, for Leah to get mental health care. Leah was even more overwhelmed. When Daniel came over, they would fight. One day, Leah wanted Daniel to stay with the children, but he left. She held Julian out the window and said, come and get your baby. A neighbor called for help and the caseworkers came back. As time went on, they told Leah that the children might have to be taken away. Leah packed up the children. She took them to a distant cousin in Kentucky. The cousin had never seen the children before. Leah told Daniel that no one could remove the children because now they were in a different state. But Daniel's father wasn't so sure. He went and got the children. He took them to the person who he knew could take care of everyone and everything, his sister, Sabrina. That would be me. I had never seen these children before and I had never met their mom. They didn't have anything, not even enough diapers to get them through the night. They hadn't even been to a doctor. Paris had ringworms. It was so bad, her hair was falling out. Julian had been so hungry that he would pocket food in his cheeks and couldn't eat properly. But I was ready to open my heart and my home to them. They didn't have anyone. 
All of this had happened to the children before I had met them. When ProKids was appointed to speak up for them, I went to meet Paris, Julian, and Sabrina. It was my first case. I wondered what I could possibly do to help them. Paris and Julian were so detached that they didn't know who to attach to. We learn as CASA volunteers that young children need to know who to attach to. If they don't, it means that something is terribly wrong. As soon as possible, we need to make sure the children have someone that they know they can count on and who will take care of them, to love them. It was clear that their best chance was with Sabrina. A home with her and her teenage kids could change everything. Pro kids could advocate for them to become a family. And then I got a phone call. Breaking news right now in Mount Airy, where an apartment building is burning. Miss Sydney, is this you? There's been a fire. Yeah, we're all okay, but we've got nothing. Nothing at all. The Red Cross is putting us on a bus. We're going to a hotel tonight. The babies are fine. Everybody's fine. But we don't have anything. And I don't know what I'm going to do. 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 I don't know what I'm going to do.